Have you got a date, please? No, Matthew, I haven't. Well, I want one before I leave. I well, Matthew, you're not going to get a date I'm today. Who asked you to speak? Across Britain, child protection teams are busier than ever before. This I want answers. I've explained it already. I want answers off you. Matthew, Wait, she gets adopted. Do you get to Ellie, still see her? Ellie, do you want to go out? Yeah. On average, one child is taken into care every 20 minutes. They had 45 minutes to say goodbye to him before they come in and just destroyed my life. Last year, over 15,000 kids were waiting to be adopted, twice as many as five years ago. All she wants is a mum who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke and doesn't take drugs. And in this day and age, I don't think it's a lot to ask, is it, poor kid? We spent two years with the people who step in to take care of Britain's most vulnerable children. So what do you think I'm doing at work, Lauren? Looking on websites to see who wants me. As they try to plan these children's futures. Who's that? It's the two mummies. It's the two mummies. They experience abuse. He sent one saying, they me shit hard. Heartache. I am his mum. I birth to him. I carried him. And joy. SpongeBob. <laughs> It all starts with the most difficult decision of all. Thank you. Whether it's safe for a child to remain with their parents. If I could, I'd get up and I'd run. Or whether that child should be taken away forever. Vicky is one of 30,000 children's social workers in Britain. We're coming to court today to get an emergency protection order for a baby, two days old. Baby's currently in hospital with mum. So the order means you can take the baby away? Yeah, today, if the order's granted. My main priority is the child, but it's very, very difficult to take that baby away from the parent. And it's quite overwhelming, really, that a judge sits there and you know, makes an order based on information that you've shared and, and sometimes that feels like a huge responsibility because, you know, it's the rest of someone's life, isn't it, really? It's not a parking ticket. Ray is the baby's father. Where are we going? Going court to uh, try to keep your baby today so they don't, as a uh, social services is. Gonna try to uh, get an EPO. What's an EPO? <laughs> Emergency protection order. Hopefully. <clears throat> Who knows? We've got a good judge today then. God knows. I might not grant it. <clears throat> you seem to be remarkably calm about it. Well, I've been to court before, yeah, for me other four boys. Two months ago. The court ruled that it was not safe for Ray and his partner Marina to care for their older children. What was the issue? Why were your children taken away? Um, arguments and obvious, just, just arguments. Always arguing, obviously under the influence of alcohol. My, my attitude now is to anybody who's got any kids, don't drink, otherwise you just could end up losing your kids. And for Lorena, God knows she's had that attachment now, haven't she, for like nine months. And then all of a sudden they just sort of come along and they just can take it, take a baby away just like a drop of art. Ray needs to persuade the court that he and his partner have changed enough to be able to take their newborn daughter home. Lorena is with Ray's mother, staying close to their daughter at the hospital. They're just like kiddie snatches in my eyes, it's horrible. Even though they've come on so far, do you know what I mean? They're just going off they to, have, what they they do off well. the boys, it's not fair. It's not fair one bit. So they do really well, they don't drink, they don't take anything no more. Do you know what I mean? And they don't just give her this chance and I think it's horrible. We should just give her the chance to prove it. Do you know? Oh, just I see. Don't cry. <laughs> don't cry to her. Because you make me cry. <laughs> If the court rules a child should be removed, they're placed in temporary foster care while an assessment process begins. During this time, that child will only see their parents in supervised contact sessions. Oh, you've got a sore bottom. Oh dear. She's eating. Yeah. yeah. 
Emily is 18. She and her partner Matthew's daughter was removed from their care at the hospital the day after she was You are extremely heavy. Six months on, Emily only gets to see her daughter three times a week under observation at a contact centre. A baby bouncer chair thing. Once a child's been removed, it's not a foregone conclusion that that's going to be forever. Thank you. See what you like in these. So while decisions are being made about that child's future, then a, a parent has a right to see the child. Oh, good girl. Burping. How come they went to get um, an interim court order? Because of domestic violence and arguments and his past criminal record and his past drug use and stuff. And I'm too young, apparently. How mucky. Basically, they're saying that I was being controlling and just like a general relationship, controlling slash domestic violence type thing. Come on, we'll feed you like this. Me being controlling towards Emily was me answering Emily's phone. Eat that bit. Stuff like that, I don't think that's being controlling. That's just being a partner to somebody really, answering somebody else's phone, I don't see a problem. <coughs> for the last six months, social workers have been working on a recommendation for the court. They have to decide whether they feel Matthew and Emily can safely look after their baby. He's mainly now a selfie girl. There she is. Since she's been removed from their care, there's been further incidents that have involved the police to their home yeah. this year, hasn't there? Yeah. Oh no. Bad mistake. But there are offences predating that where he's been aggressive and violent towards people. There's 40 offences in total. How many? 40. Oh really? It's a huge decision. So you kind of want to be clear about the evidence. Fundamentally we are looking at the risks and we're thinking about the safety of that child and that's the kind of crux of it really. We've got the evidence that she can sort of parent and meet the basic needs but it's the issues, it's the relationship outside of that really, it's the emotional vulnerability and um, particularly the relationship with uh, Matthew that would cause me concern for um, Sophie remaining in her care. I just feel that the false allegations against me I'm, I'm bloody disgusted with it all. Emily's daughter's social worker is Karen. Since she took over the case, she's been having problems dealing with Matthew. Since I've been working with Matthew, I've had nearly 3,000 text messages from him. Um, majority of these occur when, if I've had a conversation with him and he doesn't agree with something that I've said, he will then send numerous texts I think on one occasion, it was at a weekend, I had about 800 text messages. In the morning, he sent one saying, why are you scum? And then again on the same day, phone me shithead. And then again, a minute later, phone me, you're taking the piss out of me now. I do not like the way you are with me, so cut the shit and phone me. They just keep coming through. My personal opinion, um, I'll be honest, fucking, the local authority are fucking scum. ruled that Ray and Lorena's newborn daughter should be taken into care while decisions are made about her long term future. Vicky now has to go to the hospital and take the baby away from her parents. Dad was wanting to know what time I was going. He looked quite upset actually. He's, he's never really shown great emotion but and um, he ran to the lifts to go because he wanted to go back to the um, hospital to see the baby and mum. Do you want me to ring you when we get outside so you can come down? All right, see you Ray, bye. Bye. It's not going to be very nice because she's going to be devastated. And 
to be discharged from hospital without your baby must be really heartbreaking. You have to believe it's the right thing for that baby at this time. I suppose that doesn't make mum feel any better. There's a parking spot over there, Vicky, and you pay uh, 30 pence. Where the meter is? Yeah, and it's 30p. Uh, it's free for 30 minutes, so you're going to be here longer than that. No. I'll get you a ticket and then... No, no, it's all right. I'll get it, yeah. Thanks. There was a couple getting in the lift, taking their baby home. Two social workers are leaving with this baby. So it's not easy, is it? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, wasn't it? Minds all over the place, wasn't it? So it's when you carry for nine months and then give birth and then you come home and you got no to show if that makes not in an horrible way. Got no to show because I wanted to bring your baby home. What's the best outcome? from here on in? And the best outcome would be to return to her parents' care if, if she would be safe. If that can't be done, then for the baby to be cared for within the family. And then if that can't be done, we would look at the baby being cared for by somewhere else, maybe adopted. Hopefully we will get her back. We need to get her home. We're the best, we're like winning the lottery, aren't we? We'll be winning the lottery, getting her back. Mm. <laughs> Better than winning the lottery. Mm. Last year, the number of children in care in the UK passed 100,000. Oh, come on then. <laughs> Worries around Emily's relationship with her partner Matthew. Is there any shade? Meant that their daughter was taken into care the day after she was born. Social workers have been assessing their ability to parent their daughter. We've done psychological assessments, cognitive assessments, parenting assessments. It's just assessment, assessment, assessment. You're getting excited. But if you don't understand, you know your IQ. How can that make you a good mum? Hello, little girl. The social work team will soon have to recommend whether they think Emily and Matthew should have their daughter back. They will probably feel that their control has been taken away, their choice has been taken away. <laughs> However, it's about recognising if their behaviours or choices are placing the children at risk of harm. I'm not aggressive towards any children, I've not hurt any children in the past, anything like that. Bye -bye. But they see it differently as social services. See you on Friday at half eleven. Love you. The whole situation is revolved around lies in my eyes. Bye bye. What are you in? He's really, really annoyed and fed up. But he's got to just stay calm and take a chill pill and chill out a bit. Stop having a go at people. I hope oh, she goes to sleep. She will do, I'm sure. Social workers' decisions are overseen by a court-appointed children's guardian and monitored in regular meetings with an independent reviewing officer. On the morning of their review, Emily and Matthew have been arguing over a bowl that they bought for their daughter that's been broken. She shouldn't even be here, you know what I mean? Come on, Matthew. Do you want to leave it and we will get a copy of the minutes? And if you want to tell me what you want. I want to be here. I'm right. biting for my fucking okay. daughter, yeah? Okay. Right? I'm biting for my fucking okay. daughter, which I'm not going to get to fucking see. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Right? Well, you don't know that yet. And that silly fucking no, no, swag no. there, you know what I mean? Fucking, okay. honestly, I'm being your fucking sweet and innocent, do you? Okay. Matthew, I really need you Admit to be outside. It. 
We can't do the meeting. Admit it, Emily. Matthew, we Why can't... is she ignoring me? No, 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 listen, we can't do the meeting with Which is the right thing to do. This is a meeting for Sophie. I'm waiting for Sophie here today. Okay, listen. I want answers. I've explained all of I want answers off you. Matthew, Wait, she gets adopted. Do you get to Emily, still see her? Emily, do you want to go stuff? out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to manage your behaviour or not? She doesn't manage my behaviour. Well, because your behaviour isn't acceptable at the moment. I know you're yeah, upset. Sad. If I ask Emily to come back in again, will you not? I'm sorry, but you can't smoke in here. This is a public Obviously. building. We can't smoke. I'm going to go out and smoke. Okay. Social services are saying that I'm being controlling towards Emily. I'm going to start the meeting. No, no, I'm trying to get that. When in my eyes, I, I feel that they're being controlling to me. Listen, um, if I can just say to everybody, um, it, it's very clear that it's not going to start with him just having the cigarette outside. He's, he didn't... Right. Okay. Has anything been said while I've been gone? No, I was just about to say it. What I'm saying is that we're not going to go ahead with the meeting this afternoon, Matthew. Oh, no, 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 well, yes, no. I'm not wasting my time. So thank you very much. See, you dictated to me on. yet again. No, no. Yet again. We become involved with families' lives at a time of crisis. Please hold on to your reports. Hey, moving. Thank <laughs> you. Our role is about intervening. So. A person won't always want that in intervention. Matthew. 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 Fuck off. You will then become a figure of hatred as such. Stop you taking know. the piss. Well. Just stop taking the piss. I want to know why it's Emily has smashed my daughter's bowl. Sit down and sign this money for me. Okay. What's that? Oh, how much? It's for your taxi back. Five pound won't get me to Brinny. It will. I don't take it personally because I'm not just choosing randomly why I'm doing something. I am following. Set procedures. You're not going in the unit. Don't push me. You're not going in the unit. I'm the police. Right, right, right. I'm ringing the police. Right, by all means ring the police. You can either speak to the well, social no, worker. I want, I want, I want, I want answers. I want answers why this fucking meeting is not going ahead today. Get out. No. Get out. Jed is coming. Get out. Right, I've got meeting with them, Matthew. That's oh, the hi. Oh, the so. both of us are neither. This meeting has been cancelled. But yes, no, it has yeah, for because reasons. of you. For reasons. What no, reason? What reason, me, darling? Matthew, what reason? Your behaviour that you've shown today, that's the reason it's been cancelled. And you can understand why I'm pissed off, can't you? Because my daughter's bowl has been smashed. I don't know what happened this morning. I've got your son. I, I want a new time. meeting. I want a new so meeting thing starting. You've got a date, please. The courts can end that. No, you can't do a date without you got a date, please. No, Matthew, I haven't. Well, I want one before I leave. Well, Matthew, you're not going to get a date today. Who asked you to speak? I am telling you. Who asked you to speak? I am Sally's man. No, who asked you to speak? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to this lady. I'm Sally. Sally's Sally, yeah. not going to Sally. give you a meeting. Sally, have you got any dates today? I can't give you a date, no, at the moment, because I need everybody to be in agreement that they can all attend. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're the one who's just got Nate and Cantor. No, I haven't. Nate, these are the ones that... that you're yeah. kicking off. Fat bastard there. No, no fat bastard. Because, um, Matthew, can you go away? The other I'm way? talking to one of Yeah, well, yeah, she doesn't want to talk to you in the moment. I know, fair enough, there is people out there that can't have children. But why take fucking our children off us that are the rightful parents and give them to somebody else? That's just the way I feel, and Emily feels the same. Is that the place? Uh, there's the police. There's the police. Yeah. Well, ram that tank. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Come on now. Come on. Oh. Driving off. No, 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 no. Can you see from that incident how yeah. the concerns have come about? Yeah. Everywhere we go, it just kicks off. And that's what does me head in because I've kept my mouth shut. And that's said nothing has to social services for that. And I've been nice. I don't know why you can't do it. She seems to just accept it, that it happens, it's okay to happen. Um, which, in a sense, is worrying, because she's not safeguarding herself. But I think that's a lot, again, down to her own upbringing, her own emotional needs and I think her 
unfortunately, her acceptance of just how things are. Oh. Social work is there for the child, but they, they also offer an incredible amount of support to parents. So you need to kind of satisfy yourself that we've given a parent every opportunity to demonstrate change. Single mother Nicola is waiting at a contact centre to see her son. Her attendance is being closely monitored. The idea is we want parents to be here before the children arrive so they can greet them, we can see them on for that interaction and also to test the commitment to see if they can meet, you know, those quite tight timelines. And we get quite a lot that we can't possibly get up. I can't get there before 10. When you're going to have to get there before 10 when your children start school. <coughs> we need to be clear from the start that, you know, we're not messing about. It's a very serious situation we're in. Nicola, I must go upstairs. Hello, beautiful. Mm -hmm. so, so when was he when was he taken away? The day after he was born. Thirty-six hours old he was. They kept me in court all day and they had forty-five minutes tops to say goodbye to him before they come in and just destroyed my life. <laughs> When we're at the point when families are coming here, it's a black and white situation. It's either a yes or a no, isn't it? What do you think might happen? I don't know, I honestly don't know. Nicola has been in this situation before. Her first child was removed from her care and placed for adoption a year ago. I hope it doesn't go the same way as with Jaden, because I can understand why with Jaden's it did. His dad had chance after chance after chance, and I was on drugs and that. <laughs> I'm not on none of that no more, do you know what I mean? I'm in a totally different place. Whether Nicola will get her son back or not is ultimately down to the court. Hello? Hi, Fliss. Just can't wait at the door. Social worker Felicity will say. report to the court about what changes Nicola has made since the judgment about her older son. How do you think things are going in general, Nicola, for yourself? For... The way I'm living now compared to what I was living 12, 18 months ago is so much better, all right, bar my accommodation situation. I feel so much better and so much happier and I feel like I'm back to me. Not who I was on the drugs, not who I was through the alcohol. I feel like I am me now. My money's lasting me. I get, I get my hair dyed. Buy shopping, buy back in. So do you feel like you're looking after yourself more? And yeah. Whereas before, you probably just spend all that money on it's all alcohol gone. and drugs. I'd get it, and it'd be, my drugs would be there, so I'd have to pay the drug dealer, yeah. or the beer shop would be open, so I'd be at the beer shop buying the beer, and it'd be gone. We've got the timetable set up in court, so we don't want any delays for having. I think the significant thing for me is that I need to be confident that Nicola is able to maintain these positive changes that she is demonstrating. And there is no doubt that there is positive changes there. I mean, we've had a negative alcohol and drug test, and that's you know so much different from just only a few months ago. Um, but it's about whether she can maintain that, and you know the people that she's associating with. Um, is she able to sort of disengage from them and, and sort of get on her own two feet? Beautiful, aren't you? A beautiful. And although you want the best for having and, and hopefully be with birth family for him to grow up in, that's not always the best in the in his best interests. So this is quite a scary time for you. Yeah, very scary because it always, no matter what anybody says at the back of my mind, it's always the fact that he could and can go for adoption. <coughs> oh dear. <coughs> oh dear. If they're going to get their daughter back, Ray and Lorena also need to demonstrate they have changed since they lost their older children. Today they're meeting their independent reviewing officer. So what responsibility do you both take for what happened before? Because clearly... But we could have been better parents. We were, we were shit parents. We didn't realise what we did. And since the boys have gone, we're sitting talking the impacts of what we've done on mine. Are you getting any help in terms of, um, you know, sort of like support in terms of your drinking? We had drugs since last year. Well, since I've you been in detox. One, I went in detox, mate. Did you? you would never know 100%, would you, exactly what goes on behind closed doors. So you, you have to form an assessment, which is a ju judgment. You know, you're saying that you've changed now. 
can you sustain this? And that's a judgment that's well, got of course to be we can. That's If you went in and you were just taking one person's word for what was going on, then you'd be very silly and naive, wouldn't you, to think that that's the one picture for that family. It's all okay, got Ollie in front of Vicky because I wanted to come on, do you know what I mean? And we've changed yeah. and everything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of her being where she is when she could be at home with mum and dad. Do you yeah. know, we know where we've gone wrong, we know how we messed up and everything. And that's I mean? what we want, but I think what John was trying to say is because there's such a long-standing history, we need to be sure, don't we, that Yeah, well, obviously you I understand what you're changes. saying, yeah? yeah. yeah. Good morning, St Catherine's on speaking. Hello, love. No show at the moment. At the contact centre, single mother Nicola is due for a visit with her son. She has not turned up on time, and not for the first time. Hello. How are you doing? Um, if she's not here for half nine, it won't go ahead because we won't bring the baby in case she doesn't come. Nicola is a young woman with masses of potential, but unfortunately, the choices she's opted for recently have probably made things worse. I would be very, very worried about leaving a child in Nicola's care at the moment because I think she probably finds it quite difficult to look after herself properly. But as a person, you know, she can be really quite engaging and amusing. And that's, you know, that's sad, isn't it? But yeah, we, you can't judge anybody. You've not walked their shoes, have you? You've not walked their path. Excuse me. Hello, St Catherine's, I'm speaking. Yeah, I'll give a five just because we're, we're running down, but I'm not hopeful now. All right, Carol, bye. All tucked up, snugged up like a bug. We take clothes up every day, don't we, three times a week. There's no one with a little dress on in contact. When Ray and Marina's older children were removed, the court ruled they needed certain psychological therapy before they'd be even considered to care for children again. Ray's solicitor is worried social services will say this work has not been done. What they were saying was that neither you nor Lorena have really taken on board what they're, they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. That you're still awkward, angry and argumentative. How can you just sort of switch off or my batteries haven't run out, have they? You know what no, I mean? No, so so no, I'll, no. Can I, I can't just go like that with me with my four kids who I love no, daily. But, but when you're speaking to a social worker or a, a family care worker, that is how you speak to them, which they monitor. You see, the problem with these sorts of cases is that we can identify a person's problems, but then these poor parents then are left with the alternative. How do they manage to do this? How you know, I don't know where you get psychodynamically psychotherapy from. Now, what course have you been on? Right, we've done the well-being, and that's like group. Um, what group, is it? Is it a group? Yeah. Group therapy. Everybody just sort of discusses what anger problems they've got. And it's just like using like when you see red try to put a splash of white and all that there, and you could organise everybody's life and say this is what you should be eating every day. If you can't get it, hard luck. Finding the recommended therapy is down to Ray and Lorena themselves. You've tried to access those services, haven't you, through your mm. GP in the hospital, and they're saying that the therapy that they offer isn't identical to what she's suggesting. But to be quite honest, if this doesn't work out, I'll blame you, myself, Lorena, I'll blame the NHS, because at the end of the day, you'd want us all to stick together, so why can't you, I don't mean you personally, but your, your, your social workers can get in your pockets and fund our psychological thing. You have to build and form a relationship with the people that you're working with. You're supposed to be here to help, but now you can understand why a lot of people don't run to you as far out. But you always need to be clear with the family what all the outcomes may be, and that at some point, as a worker to that child, you might be making decisions that they don't agree with. So what she said to that, have you told her that? And what's she saying? Felicity has finished writing the parenting assessment on Nicola. She's been getting worried about Nicola missing contact sessions with her son. It just demonstrates the lack of consistency and commitment, unfortunately, that she's not able to come to all the contact sessions that are on offer for her. But I did speak to her on the phone, she said she was upset about her housing situation and she was trying to sort that out and she was stressed out with that. Um, so I would really like to see her arrive today.
What I was hoping to discuss with her is the um, outcome of her parents' assessment. That unfortunately the local authority um, doesn't feel that it would be in Aaron's best interest to place him back in her care. Um, and I was going to discuss the reasons for that with Nicola. But unfortunately it looks like she's not going to be turning up this morning to discuss that with me. Half an hour late, Nicola turns up to hear the news. Unfortunately, I can't see how you're going to provide Aaron with a safe and secure upbringing when you've still got nowhere to live yourself, Nicola. And am, I not, and am I not doing everything I can to sort that out? Yeah, you are, you are. I, I have to go off what I'm, I'm, what I'm seeing, Nicola, and, you know, there is a bit in a lot of missed contacts. And I would stress... I knew the minute you sat in court and said you wanted adoption straight away and that judge said, well, no, you're doing a parent assessment, I knew you were coming back and telling me that you, you wasn't giving me Aaron back because you're all scum and I'm, I'm not being horrible for listening, no, but you are all scum. I know. You've not had kids, so you no. don't know how it feels. No, I wouldn't even begin to offend you Nicola to say I know how it feels because I can't imagine how it would feel. Despite the news, Nicola has decided she still wants to attend the case meeting with the independent reviewing officer. You have just told somebody that is drug and alcohol free. You do not think they are fit to have their baby back. The news might have wrote me off but that judge hasn't. No, no. no. You wrote me off from the start. No, yeah. No, the judge hasn't written you off. Yet. No, but social services written me off from the start, and the judge hasn't. You have to be really clear yourself about whether you think that is the right plan, because it's my responsibility to challenge that for a child if I disagree. Go okay, how do you want the tissue? Thank you. But it's also a meeting where the parent is allowed to have their view about the local authority's plan. Has he started his immunisations now? No, Dad, I can't. Oh. No, but because we're in court on the Wednesday, we can rearrange a contact day. It's not contact, it I'm bothered that. about. I can't tell my little boy for his needles. That's what's winding me up. That little boy is going to be growing up, and it's important to leave behind in the records that his mum cared. I am his mum. I should be with him while he's having them. And small <laughs> things show that. I give birth to him, I carried him. She's talking about, he's my baby, I should be there to hold him while he has his needles. That small piece of information could be really important for a young adult later looking back at who they are and where they came from. I want to be at the rest of my baby's needles. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am Aaron's mum. Nobody else will ever be that little boy's mum. You're absolutely right. Um, and even when children are placed for adoption, that doesn't change. And it's important for them to be able to balance out some of the negative information they have about what was happening for their birth parents with some positive stuff about a parent who, who did have feelings for them. I have to say, hand on heart, I agree with Felicity that I don't think you're quite there yet, but I can see that you're making changes. Oh, yeah. Whatever this court decides, it's important that you keep those up for you. Thank you, Julia. All right, honey. Okay. Yeah, go yeah. on, go down to the bag. Bye. Bye. I think the tragic thing about this is that undeniably she loves her babies. Yeah. And there are really lovely things about her and she is making some changes. Yeah. But it's too little, too late. That's the really, the really sad thing. Yeah. To assess how much Ray and Lorena have changed since their older children were taken away, social services have asked the psychologist to update their report. Just There's me. previous drug and alcohol issues yeah. and domestic violence. And the psychologist did a report in the previous proceedings saying yeah. that mum needed 24 months yeah. and dad needed 12 months of psychotherapy. Yeah. I accept it's a new set of care proceedings, but I the expert report will still stand, won't it? We're saying that we've already made months. our decision, Owen. Is that we're what we're saying? We're not saying we've already made our decision. I think what we're saying is that we're not going into this blind. There's already been a set of proceedings. None of the children have remained with the parents. And that was only concluded two months ago. You know, prejudging or just being realistic, really. It's just a matter of waiting, isn't it? What do you think your chances are? 
I'd say 100% because I'm a mum. <coughs> mums are, you always have hope, don't you? I still have hopes and dreams anyway, that I'll see them all when that bitch will come home. In a minute. Yeah. That's alright. She's just calm at the moment. She knows. The assessments of Emily, Matthew and their families are complete. Social services are ready to make their recommendation to the court about what happens to their baby. Obviously this is the reconvened LAC review from last week. Matthew has now been advised that he cannot attend any further meetings and that's because of his behaviour last time which completely uh, disrupted the, the planned meeting. Okay. So, Karen, I'm going to ask you to give us an update, please, on what's happened since the last meeting. Yes. Um, obviously, local authority care plan is for Sophie to be placed for adoption. Um, both Emily and Dad Matthew, um, obviously, they've both expressed their ultimate wish to care for Sophie. Yeah. However, with the um, recognition that there shouldn't be delay for Sophie, both Emily and Matthew have said they won't well, so agree with the care plan, they're not going to contest it. Well, you've got everybody here, is there anything you want to ask anybody? Anything you want no. to say? Mm. No? No. I've been told that if you do contest it, it'll just take longer. Now, in terms of Matthew... Uh, it's not good for Sophie, she needs to know where she stands. Because the more attached she gets, the more harder it's going to be to get herself unattached. And do you feel comfortable with having made that decision? Not really, no, but it's not about me. It's for about Sophie, so it's better for Sophie, so I've done it. Are you there? Karen, are you all right for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Come on, then, take this off. I'm dying away, I'm dreading it. I'm just disgusted with the whole situation, me. Absolutely. Disgusted with it. I know I'm not out with the situation, but that's how I put my point across. If the judge agrees with the recommendation and puts Emily's daughter up for adoption, Emily will have her contact reduced until a final session when she can say goodbye. For Nicola, that session is today. With nobody else in her family judged able to take him, the court has ruled that her son should be adopted. She's due at the centre for her final contact. I'm just trying to make the room comfortable and make sure she's got any equipment she might need for playing. We try to keep it as quiet and as sensitive as possible. And obviously from Alan's point of view, we can take some more photos of him with his mum. He's got pictures that he can look at when he's older should he choose to do so. But yeah, I am apprehensive. People can become angry, they can come before very upset. Just too overwrought with the emotion to be able to do, you know, to survive the hour. We only do them for an hour because otherwise you're just watching the clock and it's like extending the torture, really. Some people's natural instinct is to think, oh, it won't happen. But I suppose to then go and see your child for the last time is, is reality, isn't it? We'll give it to half past Carol, but I would have thought if she was coming, she was likely to have come around now. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. I'm sorry. But yeah, we'll give her a bit more leeway. Right, Carol. I'm afraid to say, I think we've done as much as we can do, yeah. You see everything from people not, to, not being able to turn up to, um, you know, really heart-rending, distressing scenes, and you never know which one you're going to get. But at least, I mean, we'll look at him. He's going to be all right, isn't he? You're going to be all right, lad. Yes. I will do that. It's always sad, isn't it, when that's, that's the outcome. Thank you very much, love. No, it is, it's sad. The team are meeting to decide their final recommendation for the care of Ray and Marina's daughter. You're always thinking about the child's timescales, because what we know is that the sooner we act, the better outcome for the child. And if a child's left for a longer period, the more damage, and that kind of affects you care planning also in the longer term. 
Yeah. So we've got the psychologist at the report hot off the press. Yeah. <laughs> received this morning. Do you just want to sort of take us through other recommendations? I suppose parents were stating that they'd made significant changes and that they were trying to access therapy. The psychologist is clearly saying that it's not the therapy that she recommended. They still yeah. need that 24 and 12 months, which would mean that they wouldn't be able to parent the new baby. Yeah. Did she see them again or was this sort of a paper exercise based on the last assessment? Paper exercise yeah. based on the last paper. assessment. It's how long is a piece of string, isn't it? You can't wait forever for a parent to make those changes. There has to be a time scale and you have to make that decision for that baby to then invest in a new family and, and grow and develop. It's about a balance of risk, isn't it? And at the moment, the risk is too high about, about parents not being able to parent that child. And I will be the person that goes round and tells them that, so I probably will get the brunt of the frustration. But I suppose if I was in that situation, I would vent my frustration at the person who's knocking at my door telling me that. Hi, Vicky, Hi. come in. The psychologist reports. Have, have you read it? No. Right, OK. Why is it good or bad? Um, I've brought it with me. I thought you might have seen it, actually. No, we're at Swiss one day. Right, OK. So we had the care planning meeting and we discussed this report and what's been recommended is that it should be placed for adoption. That's the local authority recommendation. It's up to the court, isn't it, at the end of the day, whether they grant a placement order or not. It can't just be off some paper, because that's what all the reading off, Vicky, to be quite honest. There's paperwork. They look at a paper and think, well, no, they've not done much. It's like, I'm not being funny, Vicky, right? But you, you've seen me once in the last month, yeah? So how do you know how I've come? You know what I mean? I, Which I, don't, I, don't, knows... I don't think anybody's dismissing the progress that you have made, mm -hmm. because the judge and, and other people have said, you know, it's really good that you're not drinking and there isn't mm -hmm. the, you know, the police coming out and stuff like that. The key point is about this recommended therapy and that it's not been completed. Do I want to return to Manchester Piccadilly? Yeah. The next train to arrive at platform one is at 12.50. Today, a judge will make a final ruling on the future of Matthew and Emily's daughter. Twenty-four now. Thirty-five minutes to get there. Yeah, plenty of time. Thirty-five minutes, isn't it? You always have the forefront of your mind as to what is in the best interest for a child. But outside of that, naturally, I always have empathy for a parent as well because I think it'd be hard not. You know, it'd be hard not to. Because oh what they're going through is very, very difficult as well. Matthew and Emily are not contesting the local authority's recommendation for adoption. But they're still hoping that the judge might reject it. Looking at adoption, but it's up to the courts at the end of the day and um, what they decide. I'm just waiting and seeing. Hope the courts are on our side today. That's it. Hope they're in a good mood. Mm. In the court, the local authority, the parents and the child all have their own solicitors. Before a ruling is made, each can put forward their case. When I have been sat in a court and judges explained that that parent can't care for that child for the rest of that child's life, that is overwhelming. At those points, I've had to remind myself what that child's life would be like if it stayed in the care of the parents and what the child's life would be like in an adoptive placement, for instance. Because it, it is ruining parent's life, isn't it? it? It's taking a child away from somebody. She'll basically be put up for adoption now and she's going to get adopted like that, isn't she? Yeah. Too beautiful. I hate them. That's all I can say. I really do hate them. Just being scum at the end of the day. Come on, I know. I know, Em. Do you have a doubt that you've done the right thing? 
No. I could not remove a child if I did not think it was needed. And that's on a professional basis, on a personal basis as well. I would never like to think that I'm perfect and I'm 100% right every time. Me and the court might make a decision that everybody feels is in the best interest of that child at that time, but you know, the child may grow up and think that we clearly made the wrong decision. I hope that she gets to go with a good family where they're not hoverable or anything like that and she gets better GCSEs than I go. Two Fs, English and Maths, wow. Never had a job. My life's just rubbish. Social services timescales for the child meant that even if they found the right therapy, Ray and Lorena could never have completed it in time. They chose not to contest the care plan for adoption and have now separated. What are your thoughts about the local authorities' care plan? Well, it's, like it's not the local authorities' fault, it's my own fault at the end of the day. But it'd be nice if, like, obviously the NHS would help out as well. It won't just be my child if they don't come up with this therapy, will they? There'll be like loads and loads of other children who go through the same situation, won't they? <laughs> Hello, cutie. For Nicola's son, the adoption team have now taken over. This is quite an easy one, yeah. really, isn't it? Because, to be honest, he's, he's the age of a baby that somebody wants that hasn't got their own children. I mean, you've got to make a decision. You can't sit on the fence. You've got to make a decision. somebody can love you. There's no guarantees with any of these plans, but adoption is giving a child an opportunity to live with a family. And I don't think you can ask for any more than that. <laughs> the search for adopters begins. But with more children looking for adopters than there are adopters out there, some children face missing out. All she wants is a mum who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke and doesn't take drugs. And in this day and age, I don't think it's a lot to ask, is it, poor kid? What do you want? 